Welcome to the Art of Mortgage Marketing Podcast, where you'll learn the secret sauce, what it really takes to build a thriving mortgage business doing what you love, without relying on cold calling or annoying realtors. And now, let's join your host, Doran Aldana. Hey, what's up, everybody? Doran Aldana here, coming at you with another kick-ass episode of the Art of Mortgage Marketing Podcast. And today, we're going to talk about three reasons why we unwittingly self-sabotage our own success and how to support yourself to soar, how to support yourself to get out of your own way and to spread your wings and soar to your God-given potential, your God calling, and all that you know in your heart you're capable of if you can just get out of your own way. And welcome to being human. If you've noticed that you have a proclivity a tendency, a gravitational pull towards getting in your own way with just knowing that you could be doing better, you could be doing more, that there's so much more in you that's untapped, welcome to the club. (laughs) You're in good company. And that's just welcome to being human on the front lines of real life. So that is certainly a very common plight among many, especially high achievers. So you're certainly not alone. And what I want to highlight today, based on 16 years of coaching mortgage pros to success on the front lines of capitalism in the real world, are some of the most common reasons, one of the most common uh, landmines, if we can call it that, that people step on unwittingly and unknowingly that has them not not perform at their best, not step into the best that God has for them. And unfortunately, it's in the realm called they don't know that they don't know. You you can't see the label when you're inside the bottle. And this is why we need coaches. This is why we need people to speak life into our situation and to shine light on those blind spots. So today, my aim, my goal for you is to shine some light on some of those blind spots, not out of criticism or condemnation, but out of a commitment to serve you to the best version of yourself. So let's dive into it, shall we? The three reasons why we unwittingly self-sabotage our own success and how to support yourself to soar, how to align yourself with your dream. So the first one, reason number one, is sucky self-image. And I'll be the first to admit, I struggled for many years with a sucky self-image. If you've listened to many of my podcasts, you know that I've struggled in the past for many years with a feeling of being inadequate. In fact, they called me bathroom boy in school because I was constantly gravitationally seduced into going to the bathroom any chance I could because that was the altar that I worshiped at, looking at myself narcissistically trying to get my hair just right because I had a false self image. I had a presupposition, a self-image belief about myself that was not aligned with truth. I had a false belief about myself that had me in a prison of my own making. And I was constantly going to the bathroom to fix my hair. People would come in and I pretend I'm washing my hands or whatever. But the truth was, I was trying to get my hair just right so I can be loved. I could be accepted. I could be somebody. I could belong, that I would have value and worth, and that I could be cool and popular. But the problem is I was living into a false presupposition that I'm not enough, that I don't look good enough, that I don't have the right look that would have me be approved, be valuable, be popular. And so because I had that belief about myself, I was constantly trying to smear lipstick on the pig. Sure, I doctored up a little bit, but in the core, it's still a pig. And the pig, in this case, was my false self-image. I had a sucky self-image. I did not believe that I was good enough such that I was constantly trying to dig myself out of that hole. And perhaps you can relate to that. The problem with that when we get caught up into these sucky self-image belief systems about ourselves, BS belief systems, which doesn't just mean bullshit, it means belief system, BS, is that it becomes literally a prison of our own making. And so here I am, a young man, and trying to find my way in life, 
and living in this presupposition that I'm inadequate, not good enough, not good looking enough, not X, Y, and Z enough that has me constantly living in this inadequacy trap, feeling like I need to fix me before I can actually have my life the way I want it. And so I'm constantly chasing my tail and I'm constantly leaking joy and leaking peace and leaking presence because I'm navel gazing and narcissistically focusing on self instead of serving others, connecting with others, loving others, being a difference maker for others. I'm looking inward instead of outward. And the inward was not a place of peace. It was a a place of what do I need to fix so I can get peace? So that sucky self-image had me really struggling in life for many, many years. And I remember many times speaking and speaking with almost this third-party critic, like, you better not mess up. You better not trip on your lips. You better not, you better not stutter. Now, when you focus on something that you don't want to have happen, what tends to happen? You tend to create and manifest that which you're focusing on. So what you focus on, you fuel. And what you fuel gets stronger. So I was constantly fueling this sense of inadequacy. And because I was fueling it, it was getting stronger. Now it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. Now I'm stuttering. Now I'm tripping on my lips. Now I'm very self-conscious. And I'm not fully expressed to be myself. And where did I get this idea? I have no idea. Maybe it's just part of being human, but I know I'm not the only one. And many of my clients have struggled with the same thing. They feel like they're not good enough at sales or they're not good enough at marketing, or they feel like their value is in their performance. So they're constantly beating themselves up. I should be doing more. I should be doing better. I should be further along. The compare and despair of comparing themselves with other people, other people going out there who don't have the same experience or don't have the same knowledge base And they're kicking ass and taking names, leaving you in the dust. And you're like, man, what the frick's wrong with me? Why can't I get this right? And so it creates the self beat up. And then that's reinforcing. I can never seem to get this right. I was just on a coaching call earlier today. And one of my clients was like living in this presupposition that no matter what I do, it's never enough. Now, when you live in a presupposition paradigm called whatever, it doesn't matter what I do, it's never enough. How much joy are you going to have? How much peace are you going to have? How much power are you going to have? How much are you going to show up and shine and bring your best and really bring your light and your love if you're living in a paradigm of no matter what I do, it's never enough. Notice how heavy that energy is, right? It's a heavy laden energy and it will dim your light and it's unnecessary because it's not the truth. Now, if you believe it, it becomes your truth. And now you actually become a self-fulfilling prophecy of that truth and you end up collecting evidence to build your case for that truth. But it's not the only truth. It's just your truth if you believe it. The only opinion that matters is your opinion of you. Other people can say you're not enough. Other people can say your rates are too high. Other people can say your photo looks like a complete dickhead, numb nut, whatever it might be. But if you don't believe it, it doesn't really matter. It's almost like a kid, a little toddler kicking you in the shins. It's like, it's almost funny, right? It's like someone calling you a Martian. You're like, dude, are you crazy? Like, that's just weird. Like, it just makes you laugh. Like, it's just ridiculous. But when you believe it, that's where that seed of doubt that's already in your own heart gets triggered. And now you cascade into who the frick do they think they are? I can't believe they said that. The only reason that has power over your spirit is because you have a seed of doubt in your own heart, just like I did. This feeling of being inadequate, not being enough, and then pretending to have it all figured out. Notice the trap that keeps me like a guinea pig on the guinea pig wheel when I live into that lie. That's why Jesus said, the truth shall set you free. And I might add on there, paraphrase Dornell Dana version, but first is going to piss you right off because it's coming into the light of that truth. You realize, wait a second, the cost of living in that lie, it freaking sucks, right? Like this client that I was speaking with earlier today, 
she's feeling this heavy laden shame and guilt because she's constantly beating herself up, feeling like, man, you should be doing more. You should doing, be doing better. You should be further along. And the self beat up is so shame and heavy laden that she's not able to enjoy the journey. She's trying to get somewhere. She's trying to achieve to be happy instead of happily achieving. And so that creates stress, anxiety, doubt, worry, sleepless nights. It creates this energy that repels success because success does not sync up with, does not align with shame and guilt. Success aligns with joy, gratitude, peace. Success aligns with being in flow, being authentically you and loving the journey and living the dance of life with a sense of levity and laughter and love. Success aligns with that energy, not shame and guilt and feeling like you're always, you know, three inches from gold. That is not the energy that attracts success. That's the energy that repels success. You guys know it. I know it because we've all been there, haven't we? So sucky self-image is believing a lie about yourself. So when you think about yourself, do you see yourself in God's image? Do you see yourself whole and complete as fearfully and wonderfully made? Knit in your mother's womb for a special plan and a special purpose. Do you believe that God didn't make any junk and he didn't start with you? Do you believe that you are made by greatness and for greatness? Do you believe that you are whole and complete just as you are, not perfect, because only God's perfect, but do you believe you're whole and complete just the way you are, under construction, making progress, expanding into more love, expanding into more grace, expanding into the best version of yourself, expanding into your God calling. If you believe that, then you're getting closer to the truth of your self-image. But if you attach, I need to perform before I'm valued. I need to perform before I'm somebody. I need to perform before I'm worthy and deserving of success. Well, guess what? It becomes that self-fulfilling uh, prophecy that has you chasing the proverbial fleeting butterfly and it will forever elude you because you'll never quite feel like you've done enough to feel that sense that you are whole and complete. You have to own the fact you're whole and complete now. You have to own the fact that you are fearfully and wonderfully made you have to own the fact that you're divinely created to be uniquely you for special, unique calling and purpose. You have to own the fact that there's nothing for you to achieve or to do to get value. You are value in and of yourselves. I got four kids. And could you imagine, for those of you who are parents, if you looked at your kids and said, I will love you when, right? If you keep your room clean, then I'll love you right? It's ridiculous, right? Or I will love you when you get good grades. Well, I will love you when, you know, you clean up around the house and you uh, you don't beat on your, your, your siblings and you're nice to your siblings for a whole week flawlessly. Like that's ridiculous, right? We love them because they are. We love them because it's just the essence of who they are for us is to be our beloved. And it's so easy to see it when we see it from a parent, child, scenario, but it's often difficult for us to see it for ourselves in light of the divine truth that God made us whole and complete without us having to perform in order for us to be valuable, without us having to do something for us to have dignity and value and worth. And I fell into this trap too. I was constantly striving and grinding because I felt like if I don't I'm going to slide down the mountain. And if I slide down the mountain, I'm not as valuable. I'm not as important. I'm not as significant. And so my importance and my value and significance was in going higher and climbing higher up the mountain instead of the essence of who I am that is inextricably linked with value and worth and dignity. And there's it's just ludicrous to even make it a conversation about performance, earning that. 
It's just the essence of who I am. But it took me to have a spiritual awakening to come to that realization that I was grinding because I was afraid. I was living in fear. So a sucky self-image will have us living in fear. A sucky self-image will have us feeling that doubt, inadequacy, lack, limitation, scarcity, and not enoughness. And that will always have us shift into contraction. We contract our light. We contract our love. We contract the best version of ourselves actually contracts into a smaller version of ourselves. And we play it safe when we play it small. And your dream, my dream will never, never be in alignment with fear. Our dream, the best version of ourselves in our our best life will always be in sync with the best version of ourselves, which is love, peace, joy, gratitude. And that's those are all synonymous with us abiding in faith, not fear. Living by faith, not fear. Seeing ourselves through our faith eye instead of our flesh eye. Our faith eye is actually in our heart, not our, not our flesh eye. Our faith eye has us seeing it in our hearts before we see it in reality. So it's starting to actually speak it before we see it. Some people will say, well, I'll believe it when I want, when I see it. That's not actually how it works. It's I will see it when I believe it. So there's no momentum without that is not preceded by momentum within. If we want to change our fruit, on the outside, we got to change the root on the inside. And the root on the inside is our self image and aligning how we see ourselves with how God sees us. We were made to win, we were born to win. And aligning with that truth now allows us to ignite, it allows us to take flight, it allows us to step up and show up and shine to be the best version of ourselves with pep in our step and sparkle in our eye and the sense that we're on purpose with purpose to make a difference in people's lives. So there's a beautiful and glorious truth in coming to the realization that we are gardeners of our own minds and we need to be prudent and discerning and intentional gardeners of the plot between our two ears, fertile soil to either allow weeds to take our garden that has us constantly being living in a prison of our own making and all of the self-loathing or anxiety or worry or frustration or stress that comes with that. Or we can choose to be prudent and discerning and wise gardeners and start to pull out the weeds from our garden, impeach those weeds and replace them with the truth, the truth that sets us free, that we are indeed fearfully and wonderfully made, that we're made by greatness and for greatness, and that God didn't make any junk and he didn't start with us. And so owning that self-image identity as a child of the Almighty, a child of the King, a child of the divine, allows us now to step into our divine calling, to be instruments of the divine, to be shining our light and to show up and shine our light in this dark world, to be light and love in this dark world. Now we align with a truth that sets us free and to be beacons of light in the darkness, to be warriors or warrioresses of light. And now we're living on purpose and we can just relax into being our authentic true selves. That's when this adventure of life becomes fun, right? We're no longer living in this filter of like, you better not trip on your lips. You better not mess this up. I'm going to probably trip on my lips before this thing is done, but I don't care because I'm here to serve. I'm not about myself. I'm about who can I impact? Who can I liberate? Who can I be a difference maker for today? It's not about me anymore. I've transcended self at least in my commitment, doesn't mean I'm always perfect. Sometimes I'm going to have failings that remind me I've got more to learn and more to grow, but that's called failing forward. There's no condemnation in that. It's just part of growing and expanding into the best version of myself. Sometimes I'm going to skin my knees. That's cool. That means I'm in the game. If you're not skinning your knees on a regular basis, you're not playing a big enough game. That's what I'm saying. So sucky self-image is about navel gazing, being narcissistic, being self-focused, and living in this lie that we're not enough. 
which is indeed a lie. And the sooner we can impeach that lie from our garden and replace it with the truth, the sooner we can live a life on purpose with purpose and be ignited. Everyone wants to be fit, rich, and happy. Most people are fat, broken, unhappy. Why? Because it takes something. It takes stepping out of our comfort zone. It takes walking by faith, not by sight with our flesh eye, but by insight with our faith eye. It takes courage. It takes being willing to leap from the nest and grow some wings on the way down. It takes being willing to own 100% responsibility for our life with extreme ownership and having the courage to look at ourselves in the mirror and to man up or woman up and say, okay, I own the fact that that was selfish, or I own the fact that that was immature, or I own the fact that I was shirking responsibility. I own the fact that I was hiding behind trying to coddle my inner child and play it safe instead of playing full on and full out. I own that. that you know what that's called? Humility. It's called humility. It's called courage. It's called true leadership. So that's the first reason why we tend to self-sabotage is if you have a battle between your self-image and your dream, your self-image is always going to win. If you have a battle between your emotions and your logic, your emotions will always win every time. So we got to get your inner self aligned with the outer outcome you want to create. If you want a magical, abundant, fruitful, joyous life, we need to cultivate a self-image that is in alignment with that because rarely will the level of your results exceed the level of your self-image. Your self-image is like the set point on your thermostat. If you're set at 72 degrees on your thermostat or 22 degrees in your thermostat, if you're Celsius, it doesn't matter what's going on outside, whether the temperature is getting too high or too low, always come back to that set point. Why? Because your self-image sets the temperature of your life. So if you want to take your life, if you want to heat your prosperity up to that next level, we got to change the set point. Otherwise, you will self-sabotage every time. You're going to get a bunch of money in the bank account and you're going to go and blow it. You're going to get a bunch of money in the bank account and you're going to slack off until all of a sudden you realize, oh shit, I better get to it and do it because the bills are coming in and all that money I had is all gone, right? That's how it works, friends. So we've got to dial up your set point and your self-image. So you, you want to be a millionaire? You've got to see yourself as a millionaire. You've got to feel yourself as a millionaire. You've got to own the fact you're already a millionaire and the bank account just is working on catching up. That's cool. That's how it works. You start with your inner self owning that truth and you affirm it, you feel it, you believe it, you give thanks for it in advance, and then your results follow suit. There is no movement without that is not preceded with movement within. So that's the first reason. The second reason why people self-sabotage is sucky emotions. Now, emotions are simply just a reaction. If we call, talk about action, reaction, if we talk about cause and effect, emotion is just simply the effect of the true cause, which is our self-image or a deeper element of the self-image, which is our perception, our perception of ourself, our perception of our circumstances, and our perception is just part of the habit force of our self-image. So if you see yourself as a champion and you face a challenge and you have a belief that I'm a winner and winners always find a way to win, you're going to face that challenge with sparkle in your eye, pep in your step, you're going to have your shoulders back, you're going to have your freaking cape on, and you're going to eat that shit for breakfast all day, every day. How is that true? Because it all sources from your self-image. Your self-image determines the habit force reaction or response on the meaning you add to your circumstance. On the flip side, if you have a belief that you're never enough, then no matter what you do that says that for your background, your ethnicity, your skin color, and if only you had you know, better parents or different accent or uh, better education or whatever it is, then you'd have more success. Well, guess what? Now, when you face that challenge, you're bringing your self-image to that challenge and you're going to have a natural response or reaction to that circumstance or event 
based on how you see yourself. It all spawns from your self-image and it's all habit force. You don't think about it. It's like you knock your elbow in just the right spot and all of a sudden you get that automatic response, right? You knock your knee just in that right spot, right spot, just like what they do when you go to the doctor with that little rubber, I don't even know what it's called, the little rubber hammer, and they, they knock it right on your knee. What happens? Your leg just without you even thinking about it, just jolts out in front of you because it's this reactionary wiring. You hit that spot, react. Hit that spot, react. And so what happens is all of a sudden now we become a prison to our circumstances. We actually become a prisoner of our circumstances because our emotions have power over us because it's all a reactionary habit force reaction to our belief system that is all in the realm called unconscious. We don't even think about it. It's habit force. And so what happens is when you know the proverbial shit hits the fan and challenges show up, if you notice that those challenges have you contracting in fear, anxiety, worry, stress, sleepless nights, and you start to get into the fight or flight mode, the part of your brain called the amygdala, the protective part of your brain, now is pumping cortisol and adrenaline into your bloodstream, which is a cocktail that has you be amplified in your you know, intensity of awareness to react, to protect, to take flight or to fight, but it drains your energy big time. It's massively energy draining. So what happens is you get a little energy jolt momentarily, and then you literally, your, your tire goes flat and you just, you get totally drained. You don't want to get a, out of bed in the morning. You're coping with porn or alcohol or whatever to try and get a little extra, you know, energy in your battery because your battery is so drained. So then we start coping with all these false sources of power that make things even worse. Now we're in this downward spiral. So sucky emotions can absolutely cause you to self-sabotage because we make foolish decisions when we're in fear. We don't think logically, we think emotionally, and we do stupid shit we'd normally never do if we were in peace. So that's why one of my favorite sayings is, when I have my peace, I have my power. I'm the master of my mind. When I have my peace, I have my power. And so I just anchor into that knowing that it's in my peace that I have my power. Not when I'm in fear, not when I'm anxiety, not when I'm in the stinking thinking that has me in contraction mode, but when I'm in this expansive, trusting, faith-filled state of peace, joy, gratitude, love. Those are all siblings of peace. They're all the fruit of faith. When we live by faith, not by fear, now we're making choices that are divinely inspired, that are divinely compelled, that are divinely ordered. And all of a sudden, the chaos and crazy starts to dispel. And what happens is total alignment and everything falls together in perfect peace and perfect order. Maybe not overnight. One of the other things that I have is one of my mantra, my mantras, my wife and I, we have this as a mantra, is everything always works out for us. And it brings a smile to our face when we say it, right? Everything always works out for us. And what happens is when you live that as your mantra, guess what? You're right. Just like Henry Ford said, whether you believe you can't or you can, you're right. You become a self-fulfilling prophecy that has you become a magnet for abundance, a magnet for magic, a magnet for things falling together in divine order. And the chaos dispels. And what is the compelling gravitational pull of the current of life is order and beauty and abundance and joy and power and prosperity. Why? Because the inner world is the precedent and the source from which the outer world is created. So we have to source it from within before we're going to create it without. And so sucky emotions will have us contract in fear. The opposite of fear is faith. So we know when we're out of faith because we're in fear, right? Like I had 
quite a journey over the last few years, Cli you know, climbing up the mountain. I went from six figures, healthy six figures to seven figures to building a big business. My monthly nut was like 50,000, 60,000, $70,000. And I was still in this paradigm of, I need to perform in order to be somebody. I need to perform in order to be loved and accepted and have influence. So I was still living in that grind paradigm that had me grinding and living in this, you know, always dr adrenaline pumping state versus just being in flow. And because I was still in that grind mentality, you can imagine how that went with my sleep. Grind does not bode well with sleep. If your sense of identity, your sense of safety and security is linked to your performance and your performance is in not necessarily in a truth state of being precarious, but from a self-perception, it feels precarious. Guess what? No bueno when it comes to sleep, right? So here I am. I'm, you know, it's a Sunday night. And I'm wanting to go to sleep, but I can't sleep because I'm afraid that if I don't sleep, I'm going to be dragging my ass. And if I'm dragging my ass, I'm not going to be able to perform. And if I don't perform, then, you know, the whole thing's going to fall apart and I'm going to slide down the mountain. Sound familiar? Welcome to being human on the front lines of real life. So I'm right there with you. I've been walking that journey too. And what I found is that in me not fully trusting and feeling like it's about me doing it, me grinding, me performing, me striving, I'm losing sight of the fact that I'm just a simple, I'm a vessel that needs to surrender. And it's in surrender that I find serenity and strength. And it's in surrendering in God's hands and God, here I am, use me. I just surrender to your will, to your purpose. I surrender to your plan for my life. This is not about me. This is about you. I abide in your light. I abide in your love. I'm simp simply your instrument, your willing vessel. Use me. I may be broken. I may be cracked, but you fill all those cracks with your grace. So I just surrender into your loving arms and I trust you. All of a sudden now I'm sleeping again. All of a sudden now it's in the surrender that I find serenity and strength. So it's a paradox. The more we want it, the less we have it, right? The more you want sleep, the less you have it. The more you surrender and trust, the more it just happens naturally. It unfolds naturally. Now we're in flow. It's one of my favorite words, being in flow. Being in flow for me means that I'm not trying to get somewhere or to be something in order for me to have my peace, in order for me to have my fulfillment of my purpose. I'm just being the fulfillment of my purpose now. And there's no striving or trying to get somewhere to attain it. And that's how we live a fulfilled life. Fulfilled is when we find a way to live our purpose in a fulfilling way now without having to achieve to get it. And that is such a liberating experience. We all are called to, to find that fulfillment for ourselves, not in getting, but in giving, not in trying to attain and acquire and accumulate, but in giving away, giving our, our heart, giving our gifts, giving our talents, giving our abilities to serve others, to make a difference for other people, to be light and love in the darkness for others. That's true liberation. So sucky emotions will have us contract into self-preservation and a sense that we need to protect self. We need to do all we can to keep ourselves safe. We need to do all we can to achieve success because if we don't, then we're going to have X, Y, Z happen. And notice that's a punishment. And when we feel a fear of punishment, guess what? We're in fear. So perfect love casts out all fear. That's the answer to fear is abiding in perfect love. And so it's, again, a faith walk, walking by faith, not fear. And then the third reason why we tend to self-sabotage and leave a whole lot of joy and a whole lot of fun, fulfillment and funds in our bank account left on the table to our competitors 
is sucky strategy. So we have a sucky self-image, we have sucky emotions, and then we have sucky strategy. Sucky strategy is where you're heading east looking for the sunset. Sucky strategy is when you're heading to the gunfight with a butter knife, right? It does not bode well if you have the wrong strategy. It doesn't matter how motivated you are. It doesn't matter how talented you are. It does not matter how positive you are. If you're heading east looking for the sunset, we got a problem, right? So that sucky strategy needs to be shifted to effective strategy or you know, if you're on 100% commission, you would you kill with no safety net, you're going to have skinny kids pretty quick if you don't have an effective strategy. You know what I mean? So that's where mortgage professionals, growth-minded, smart, ambitious uh, mortgage professionals, that's the big reason why they hire us because they realize that it's going to be a whole lot more expensive learning from their own mistakes than to learn from an expert. They realize that they're sick and tired of showing up to the gunfight with a butter knife. They're ready to upgrade with a freaking tank. They realize that if they want to conquer their dream, if they want to build the skyscraper of their dream, they need to big, dig, dig a deep hole for the foundation. But if they're digging that hole with a gardening trial, we got a problem. That's doing it the hard way. There's something called an excavator. It's a whole lot more fruitful. It's a whole lot more fulfilling. And it's a whole lot more effective. So the sucky strategy is using a, a gardening trial when there's something called an excavator. Why would you do it the hard way unnecessarily? There's no brownie points of doing it the hard way, or rather there's no brownie points or merit badges at the bank for doing it the hard way, is there? So it doesn't matter if it takes you 100 hours to make 10K or whether, make, or whether it takes one hour to make 10K. Why do it the hard way unnecessarily? Same thing here. We've got to take the shortest path to the cash, as I like to call it. And the shortest path to the cash in the mortgage business to get you making more zeros and commas in your bank account in one month than you used to make in six to 12 months is to attract top producing realtors to make you their exclusive without the hell of cold calling. The shortest path to the cash, if you have a database, is to mine the gold from your database so you can maximize repeat referral business on autopilot. So you're building a systems-based business instead of just a you-based business. So it runs like a finely oiled machine in your absence, and you're capturing and cultivating the best quality lead you could ever get. Repeat them referral from your past client database and referrals from top producing realtors who make you their exclusive. But not the arrogant, apathetic, you know, prima donnas that think their poop don't stink and think they can walk on water and they kind of get that pompous, prideful arrogance, not those ones. I'm talking about the cool cats who you love and adore and they love and adore you. I'm talking about the cool cats that charge your battery, that fuel your rocket. You just love hanging with them. You love serving them. You love bringing your gift to them. They inspire the shit out of you. When you hang with them, the best version of yourself wants to rise up and serve them with excellence for excellence sake. Those are the people you want to be rolling with, right? So we need to have a strategy to get you to your goal so you're not using the gardening trowel instead of the excavator. The strategy is key to giving you leverage. Leverage means more results, less effort. Leverage is like you've got a board with a nail driven in it. You can try and pull that nail out with your bare hands or you can grab a freaking crowbar and give a little push and bada bing, bada boom, it comes out like a hot knife through butter, easy breezy lemon squeezy. That's leverage. So we wanna bring leverage to your strategy. More results, less effort. We call that here on Planet Prosper, the shortest path to the cash. So if you're listening to this, you're watching this, you're like, Dorn, I'm, putting, I'm picking up what you're putting down. I'm definitely seeing how I'm getting my own way with stinking thinking. I'm, get, I'm seeing how I, I've been imposing some presuppositions about myself, of myself that are not serving me, that are creating contraction, fear, self-loathing, doubt, lack of confidence, I'm leaking my power and to no one's betterment, not to mention least of which myself. I can't give what I don't have. If I'm not the best version of myself, I can't help others do likewise. If I'm not shining my light bright, I can't help others do likewise. Like they talk about in the airplanes when they give instructions for safety, parents or those who are taking care of dependents Don your own mask what? Don your own mask first. Because if you don't care, you know, take care of yourself, you're not going to be able to take care of others. You can't give that which you don't have. So if you're listening to this, watching this, you're like, man, 
Dorn, I feel you on that. There's opportunities for me to step into the a better version of myself, a more joyful version of myself, a more peaceful version of myself, a more powerful version of myself, a more inspired version of myself. And I notice that I'm getting in my own way. I notice that old habits die hard. If that's you, I invite you just to give yourself grace. Welcome to the front lines of real life, being human. We're all humaning, so it's all good. Give yourself grace, forgive yourself. And now you have a choice to keep doing the same old thing, getting the same old results, or step into making a bold, intelligent investment in yourself by having a champion level coach in your corner, bring out the champion version of yourself so you can get champion level results. And if that's you and you're sick and tired of spinning your wheels, banging your head against the wall, doing it the hard way, and you're ready to step up and really crush it, really conquer, but not do it to get, not do it so you can get happy, but to happily achieve, to embrace and love every moment of the journey to the utmost and to make yourself impervious to those storm challenges that are absolutely inevitable in life. You will have challenges. The question is not if, but when. And are you going to turn them into opportunities? Or are you going to allow those challenges to kick you in the proverbial nut or ovaries and have all a matter of unnecessary suffering? Have you live in a story of suffering and hating the process because every challenge is just another kick in the nuts, another kick in the ovaries. And now you're coping with all a matter of unhealthy coping mechanisms that are not having your light shine bright. They're dimming your light and they're bogging you down into more shame, more guilt, more stress, because it's not a healthy alternative. It's a crutch that has you continue to limp along, not spreading your wings and soaring to your God potential. If you're ready to step into your God potential, like the caterpillar step into the cocoon and taking flight, those big, beautiful, colorful wings spreading and literally stepping into you being a big, beautiful butterfly soaring into your dream, a transformation, a metamorphosis. If you're ready for that kind of a transformation, then I invite you to book a breakthrough call where you'll get on the phone with me or one of my consultants and we'll lift up the hood. We're going to have a real talk conversation, not talking about just a laundry list of all the shit you think you need. Cause I'm here to tell you what you think you need is not going to solve the problem. As Albert Einstein said, you can't solve the problem with the same mind that created it. So we're going to shine the light of truth on your situation to look at where you're at now. Where do you want to be? If we can help you create that breakthrough, we're going to show you what that looks like. If not, we'll be the first to advise you to pass. Either way, though, you're going to leave that call with massive value, massive clarity, and chances are we're going to have some fun. So if that sounds meaningful and worthwhile to you, and it definitely should, and you're 100% commissioned mortgage professional, and you're on an 80 basis points comp plan or higher, and you want to create an absolute breakthrough in your life, and you're sick and tired of doing it the hard way, book a call, mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. So thanks for hanging with me today. We just talked about the three big reasons why we unwittingly self-sabotage our own success and how to support yourself to soar. I trust you got some insights some value, some distinctions from our time together today. I'm here, y'all, just to be a step ahead of you, if at all possible, to shine the light of transparent vulnerability in my own life, I'm right there with you. I'm not any better than you are. I'm just learning and growing and sharing my insights with you. I've been on the front lines helping mortgage professionals do this for 16 years and counting. So this is not my first rodeo. And if you feel like you're ready to level up and you feel like you're ready to level up the caliber of coaches in your corner so you can level up the caliber of results in your life, Book a call, mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. This is Dorn Aldana coming at you from the Art of Mortgage Marketing podcast. We'll see you on the next episode. And you absolutely, without a shadow of a doubt, have invaluable worth and value and dignity. And you have a God calling that's drawing you in every day if you will simply surrender in trust, in faith, and pursue your purpose to serve others, to make a difference in people's lives. This is not about us, friends. It's about 
shining our light and shining it bright to be a difference maker for others. So I invite you into that calling. I invite you into that adventure. It's a blessing to serve you. Be well, be blessed. We'll see you on the next episode. Peace, y'all.